Hi, hello and welcome back to Med with Med Simple, the musty YouTube channel for all the medical students across the globe. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please press the red subscribe button and the bell icon nearby to get notified as soon as I upload a new video. Currently I'm making more than 2 videos per week, so don't miss out, press the sub sub subscribe button right now. So as a part of the nephrology lecture series, in this video we'll be talking about focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. Now let's begin. This is the microscopic uh, appearance of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. So at the end of this video, you'll be able to uh, identify a slide of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis and you can tell the features in that slide. Focal segmental glomerulosclerosis is a disease which manifests as nephrotic syndrome. So if you want to know uh, nephrotic syndrome um, per se in detail, um, I've already made a simplified video on that and the link of that video is given in the description in the com comment section of this uh, video so go to the comment section below and watch the video if you want to or else you can continue watching this video so focal segmental glomerulosclerosis involves effacement of food processes of podocytes so now most of us make this mistake right here we, we forget the fact that focal segmental glomerulosclerosis also involves effacement of food processes of podocytes. We just consider that effacement of food processes of podocytes occurs only in minimal change disease, but that's not the case. Uh, for the pathogenesis of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis to take place, effacement of food processes of podocytes is a very important thing to happen in order, to, in order for that to uh, uh, occur. So this will lead to a defective glomerular barrier and finally leading to nephrotic syndrome. Okay? So this is most commonly seen in adults, uh, okay? So this is a focal segmental glomerulosclerosis is most common in adults. So what does the name focal segmental glomerulosclerosis mean? So we'll uh, see part, uh, part, part by part of the name and we can uh, finally sort it out. The word focal means only few glomeruli are involved. So if there are about five glomeruli, uh, let's say, okay, there are actually millions of glomeruli out there. So if there, if there are five glomeruli uh, in the section which we are going to see in microscope, among that, not all the five glomeruli are going to be affected here. Let's say only one glomeruli will be affected, okay? So that's what the word focal means. And segmental means only a portion of the glomerular tufts are involved. So uh, if in, that, in the same example which I, be, which I told you, uh, in that one affected glomeruli out there among the among the five, uh, not the full portion of that glomeruli is uh, sclerosed. Only a portion of that uh, glomeruli is sclerosed. Uh, this will be made more clear if I show you that picture. Okay. So the other word glomerulosclerosis means sclerosis of glomeruli, uh, as obvious as that. So let's put it all together, and you'll see that. Uh, there will be uh, sclerosis of few glomeruli, okay? Only few glomeruli are sclerosed and only a portion of them are involved. Not a full uh, portion of the glomeruli is affected, only a small portion of them are really involved in focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. So now, with the, with the basic funda, you need to know, just look at this picture right here. This is a highly magnified light microscopy uh, image showing an individual glomeruli which is affected by focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. Okay, so as you can see here, in the right half of this glomeruli, there is dense region, eosinophilic region, right? You can see here, right? And this is uh, the area which is affected in focal segmental glomerulosclerosis in this uh, in this kidney. Okay, in this in this glomerulus. So. What really happens here is that uh, the entire glomeruli, as you can see here, is not really affected. Only a segment of or a portion of this glomeruli is affected, okay? So there you go. Uh, you get the meaning of focal segment of glomerulosclerosis right here. So now let's see about the classification of focal segment of glomerulosclerosis. So as for most of the diseases, there is something uh, known as primary focal segment of glomerulosclerosis, uh, for which the cause is idiopathic, which means the cause is not known. Most of the diseases out there have uh, this thing as their classification in as one of their classification. For example, let's say hypertension. 
hypertension has got primary hypertension which means uh, the cause is not exactly known so that gives you a point to write an exam so focal segmental glomerulosclerosis can occur due to a few other conditions such as HIV and heroin abuse it can uh, occur due to scarring of previously active lesions in kidney such as IgA nephropathy so in this condition what happens is initially there will be few active lesions in the kidney and when they are about to heal uh, scarring occurs in those glomeruli and this will lead to development of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. This can also occur as an adaptive response to loss of renal tissue. So this is one of a very important pathogenetic uh, factor of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. So what really happens here? The adaptive response to loss of renal tissue is uh, the thing which means in few conditions where there is a um, partial loss of renal tissue, the kidneys try uh, to overcome this by compensatory hypertrophy. Initially, that compensatory hypertrophy will be helpful to overcome uh, the, uh, lo uh, the functional loss of the kidney, but later uh, the overload will lead to uh, hyalinosis and sclerosis of the hypertrophied areas, and that is one of the important pathogenetic factors for development of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. And there are a few inherited forms of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis which is beyond our scope in this video. And there are they have been told that it has been told that there are a few circulating factors out there in the persons with focal segmental glomerulosclerosis which are really responsible for development of this disease. And it's not been clearly found they're so anonymous as I am. <laughs> So, if you guys want me to do a face reveal, uh, help me reach uh, 10k followers on Instagram. The link of my Instagram profile is given in the description of this video, so go follow my page, Instagram page right away. So, pathogenesis. As I told you in uh, the beginning of this video, there is effacement of uh, food processes of visceral epithelial cells, and this will affect the glomerular barrier. As the glomerular barrier is affected, there will be hyperpermeability, which means the plasma proteins which are not normally filtered out of the glomerulus are actually filtered here. In this condition, that will lead to deposition of these plasma proteins in the glomeruli. This will, on chronic, uh, on chronic uh, cases, what happens is this will lead to development of hyalinosis and finally sclerosis. And there are a few factors such as TGF beta, which are actually involved in mesangial proliferation uh, in focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. So these are the main pathogenetic features uh, which occur in uh, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. So this is the pathogenesis in a nutshell. So morphology, uh, this can easily be found out by light microscopy itself. You can see the focal segmental uh, glomerulosclerosis part in this right here as I'm shown in a, with this arrow okay so what I'm trying to show here is hyalinosis as you can see here you can see hyalinosis over here and you can see some some sort of some amount of uh, mesangial proliferation and all that in this slide right here so but you cannot see effacement of food processes in, in this slide so in order to see that you need to do electron microscopy uh, in electron microscopy, you can see effacement of food processes of visceral epithelial cells, which are also known as protocytes. Uh, electron microscopy is not affordable in most of the um, health centers, and that's why it's not feasible to do electron microscopy in all the cases. So in those kind of situations, uh, light microscopy itself is helpful. So there is a variant of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. There are actually many variants. So we're considering this one variant right here, uh, which is known as collapsing glomerulopathy or collapsing variant of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, which deserves uh, a consideration, uh, which deserves a mention actually. So this form most commonly occurs in HIV-associated nephropathy. Uh, now HIV AIDS actually causes so many renal pathologies. So it actually it's a separate topic. So if we're going to talk about that, it's going to take much time and we'll be distracted out of the topic of today's session. So I'm just 
telling you the thing. So HIV associated nephropathy will lead to development of collapsing glomerulopathy, which is a variant of focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, and it's a very severe form of focal segmental glomerular sclerosis. They are very refractive to treatment, and the treatment is not satisfactory in these patients, and the prognosis is overall very poor. The clinical features of focal segmental glomerular sclerosis can be uh, either nephrotic syndrome alone or the patients can uh, present, nephrotic uh, present as nephrotic syndrome along with features of nephritic syndrome such as hematuria and hypertension. So nephrotic syndrome uh, is the thing which is manifested as a triad of proteinuria, or, uh, proteinuria generalized edema which is also known as anasarca and hyperlipidemia. So as I told you earlier, I made a simplified video on nephrotic syndrome and I provided the link of the video in the comment section below. Go check it out. The treatment, uh, in most of the cases, uh, corticosteroids are tried, but it's not always satisfactory to treat these patients with corticosteroids um, because as compared to minimal change disease, in that case, about 90% of the cases dramatically respond to corticosteroids, but here it's not the, it's not the case. Uh, even if you treat the patients with corticosteroids, uh, mostly they'll get relapse or the patient won't respond itself and there can be various outcomes out there, but still you gotta try corticosteroids. And for a few patients we can do renal transplantation in order to let them survive, but still, even after renal transplantation, within a few hours, a few days, proteinuria can occur in them and they can develop focal segmental glomerular sclerosis once again. And that's thought to be because of those anonymous circulating factors out there. So I think you know uh, what you have to do now. Go to, the, go to my Instagram page and follow me over there. I'll provide the link in the description of this video. So if I reach 10K followers, I'll do a face reveal. So my videos need to reach uh, many medical students out there. I need to help people out there. And in order, to, in order for that to happen, you need to like this video and comment your suggestions below and uh, share this video to your friends, juniors or whatever. Thank you for watching. And if you like this video and you want me to make more videos in the future, um, please visit this link www.patreon.com slash simple and you can donate me over there and that will really be useful for me. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.